This is the Will Clay Church of Christ in Umber, Texas. This is Sunday morning message for us on February 5th, 2023. It is entitled, Jesus Master. Are you telling me all these people are going to hell? Jesus Master. Are you telling me all these people are going to hell? Matthew 23, 1 through 15 is our text. Before we get deep into this message, I want to add some more meat to the lesson that we've taught. We had three parts. One of the parts is very short from Wednesday night. Leaders of the secular world, God has used past and present. I mentioned to you about the priest or the prophet coming to a foreign king, telling them all he could have read. Something about himself, but there's two more things, Brother Frears, remind me of. We don't want to shorten God's power and strength. One is he can come to them in a dream as he did Abimelech. Thank God for the preacher reminding me of that, Brother Javier Frears. He came to Abimelech in a dream and told him what was going on in his life. And also, he can, he can give them a stirred up spirit, as the Bible said of Cyrus, to stir up the spirit, causing him to want to do something. As we said before, sometimes you hear people say, the Lord told me to do this. As I told you, you better take that gift before you don't get nothing. Because uh, that's they're asking you to do some sin. You have to understand the Lord is able to cause individuals to help you and to cause you to be able to help others. And so remember that. And the Lord is, as that's what the whole lesson is about. We have one more part. Uh, maybe to how secular people, leaders are able to help you. So I want to shorten God's arm to where, because we see scripture showing that they had other ways to have their heart prick to say things to you, the you know, forefathers, the Jews. And so the idea is that, and that's what he said, the Lord stirred up my spirit. That's why at least I forgive me, Isaiah said that that would happen. He would stir him up Cause him to uh, rise up and be able to help the Jews, and he did. So I want to add those in the lesson so you'll know the full meat of the understanding of the lesson to know that when this secular leader says something to you, you have to take heed to it. The reason being is because if you see that this individual is about to do something that is a blessing to what you need done in the community, you have to understand, it doesn't mean the Lord is going to save his soul. It just means that you're going to be blessed by that action. That's what Cyrus did to the Jews. And it's an interesting study. You can pull it up. Brother Frears has put it online for us. And so we thank God for that. So we want to remind you of that. Now let's go into this particular lesson here we're going to deal with concerning the statements Jesus made. Uh, Jesus, Master, are you telling me? All these people are going to hell. Uh, you, you come across people all the time. I'm going to keep encouraging you, saints. I'm telling you, I've been in the Catholic Church right now. If I could not have read, it was wrong. My wife, a good woman, but as long as I was as a Catholic, I'd ask, where's that in the Bible? That's just, that's how I was. I'm going to die that way. And uh, although I wasn't asking you as a Catholic, I started asking as a person searching for salvation and so and when we get in the church of christ sometimes we hang that file up and we don't do that no more just quit asking why is that in the bible and that's why we do foolish stuff we look a lot like the denominational church the more we live and i'm gonna say it because you need to understand what you see see the lord spoke swiftly against his priest he spoke against his priest he said and the world knew they're not doing what the Lord said. That don't mean the world loved the Lord. They said they're not doing what the Lord said. Because he let them know, I'm not going to mess up my good name. That's why he beat David down. See, if you want to hear only good stuff, you're going to die lost. It's guaranteed you're going to die lost. Because see, that's what they told Isaiah and the other prophets. You know, give a smooth thing. See, if that's what you want, I'm, I'm promising you, you can get it. But you're going to die lost. See, because you don't just eat sweet food. The law says too much honey, not good. 
Now, I'd like to see you have a diet of only honey. You, we'll, we'll, be coming, we'll be coming to visit you in the hospital at some point because it's not designed that way. And you don't understand the word is sweet as honey, but it's also bitter too. You know, because if you're not right, uh, you're struggling with that. The Church of Christ teaches all points. You can always spot a denomination. Always talking about what you're going to get, what God going to do, how he with you. And he's not even with the speaker. Raggedy life, children all over the planet, all in the church, not with his wife. You can't tell me about these brethren. I don't have to tell you about them. Just let their mouth tell you they don't know what they're saying scripture. And if you don't see that, that's your part. See, brethren, you, some of you have asked God, I want to know the truth and only the truth. And the Lord give it to you and you spit it out. Amen. I've done it before. I spit it out before. But you learn out the why, you better pick it up and take it back. So, when you're telling people about heaven and hell, that's what they do to you. So you're trying to tell me all these people are going there. So I'm going to see if these so-called holy people will believe exactly what Jesus said about us, you and me. Us, you and me, in this room. I'm going to see if we're going to believe this. In the church of Christ and these so-called holy people outside the church. And every time somebody tells you that the next time this God prick my heart next time somebody tells you that you tell my people go on there go please I'm begging please go to Matthew 23 well we had not just go to Matthew 23 see because you don't understand the people you think love the Lord they don't know how to love the Lord and you might want to check and see if you really love it it's so astounding when a man says that's not what he meant. You just, you buy it. Sennacherib said, who's a God going to stop me? I done killed and ground them to powder. All the gods. Israel didn't even fight him. His armor was destroyed by the angelic host. And then his sons killed him. Another man never stepped foot one toe on Israel. But he went to everybody else and whooped them. Whoever he chose. That God allowed him to get to. So, he didn't kill him instantly. You, you expect them to turn to powder before you when they lie? But the challenge is, do you love the Lord? See, you don't know the Lord. You, you want the rest of their soul, but the Lord has said, I'm going to see if you still love me because I'm going to make them bring it. They're going to bring it so sweet. David would have listened to it if it wasn't for the Lord. And you're going to listen to it because you, you, you just or I just will not trust the written word. You know? But Watch the Lord say who's going to hell. And he's going to call out some names. Isn't that amazing? Wow. So this is how people would have talked to Jesus, though, just like they talked to you. The Lord said if they believe you, they'll believe me. If they reject me, they'll reject you. He, he showed the switch. As long as you say my word, it's going to bring you trouble. The master is greater than the house. So you can't be better than Jesus. You have to be in a mold to be like him. You'll never be better than Jesus. So just as they say this to you, they would have said it to Jesus. Here's a few of the groups. Scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, lawyers, and all people. The Herodians are an unusual group because they were partial towards Herod and his movement. The people were really, the people were really in tune to these particular secular leaders. They really were. Because these Herods are different titles to individuals, like the word president or something. But these individuals are connected family-wise. And so when they heard it was a new king being born, they got afraid. All the Jews, the people, and Herod. Why would the Jews get afraid there's a new king being born? Because we like Herod. This can't be because you hate him. Up to this point, he's been kind of okay. He's a police leader and all that. But when he starts killing their babies, and now you get the understanding, Rachel is crying because her baby did. That's what it was talking about in prophecy. Two years down, now you understand the dog that's in control. See, that's what the Lord calls him, the dog. That's what he calls wickedness. 
So you be careful who you jump on board with as a leader. Because the Lord can make them turn their sword and put to your throat and take all you got. There's no way Jews should have been afraid of a new king being born when this topic is coming up in Bethlehem. They supposed to go, well, hold on, wait a minute, this might be the one. I used to tell you, boy, you can see this today in our brethren. That's how you know that was your brethren. Look at Matthew 23. Why are the scribes and Pharisees looked at this way? Why is it like this? These are the actual leaders. They're not, they don't, they don't, he don't sit them down. He don't come and sit them down. He just tell you don't listen to them. Matthew 23 and 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All that for whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not at their worth for they say and do not. So now Moses is seat. They speak from the law of Moses. They speak and talk about the prophets. Because this is all stemmed from Moses' law. You've got people today that are so ignorant towards the word of God and the history. Like seven day Adventists. When you say, well, you know, he said about Moses' law. He said, so you said Moses' law. And you look at this and say, don't you understand that's who brought the law? See, you know right there, see, and what you're not understanding, you know right there, I have a person that's like a child in understanding. You're trying to break down stocks and bonds to, to a six-year-old. And that's not to belittle the intellect, it's to belittle the amount of knowledge you about the Bible. You didn't know when the Lord said Moses told you that represent that can represent everything in the law. Just by him referring back to what Moses talked about. Because they stem from that. Different prophets came. They didn't come and contradict Moses. Moses is after Abraham and his heir and Noah and them. So when you hear him talk about that, he's not talking about what was before Moses. Because the law came by Moses. You have to understand that. So you got people that will, and, and, and I just want you to be aware. Do you understand who you're dealing with? You're trying to put them at your level, and they're not. Amen. <laughs> Although it's in the book, you think God is letting them retain even scholars. Well, if the scribes were so technically put together well to make their spiritual Connection gone. How come they didn't understand what Jesus was saying? How could the Sadducees not know the power of the Father? How could you not know that? That's why he tells Nicodemus, the Pharisee, you're a master of Israel and you don't know this. See, you're not, you're, you're looking at the TV, Jesus, it doesn't exist. This is the real Christ. Christ did not deal with people like he's portrayed by false teachers. And many members of the Church of Christ aren't portraying him right. That's pathetic. You have to know who you're dealing with because this book speaks loud volumes. What he said, you don't have to pray about it. Just read it. Just read it. So he, he sizes them up. All therefore, he says, you need to observe and do. Verse 4. Well, why don't you do what they do? For they bind every burden's grievous to be born. They'll put something on you that the Bible doesn't teach. And now you got to carry. And laid them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move with one of their fingers. They're not going to move with one finger. Because all they got to do is flip it off. Watch how you're going to explain what they do. But all their work they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. So they make a, a clothing that makes you know who they are. That's what they do. And love the uppermost rooms at the feast. And the chief seats in the synagogue. We want, we, want, we want to be seen. And greetings in the marketplace to be called of me. And rabbi, rabbi. See, they like that. Because you're not going to be called no rabbi if you're not a rabbi. See, this is just one of the problems with brethren dealing with this title. Doctor and reverend. Uh, preaching meritus. And so... You think everybody can be an emeritus? You need to go look at what that means. 
if you're not a very old man that has served in many years, and you're not going to be no woman having it, and then now you have sat back and you're basically training others, but you still have your control and power rule. That's what emerges me in the educational world. I'll tell you what, you find a professor emeritus. You better not cross him, even if you are the president, because he got some connection with people that put money in your pocket. People learn real fast just because you're at the top don't mean you're running everything. It depends on who was there before you or who was involved with the work period. So you need to know it's certain titles you don't even wear. You don't even associate with yourself in the church. It shows your ignorance of what it means. You're not going to redefine what doctor and emeritus mean. Christian of the year, stuff like that. Those are real terms given to men right here in Houston, Texas. So, he says these individuals like this title, Rabbi, Rabbi. They're not even supposed to wear it. Now watch how he break down how you're not supposed to wear it. But be you not called Rabbi for one of your master, even Christ, and you're all bred. So now that kid, that's it right there. It doesn't matter that they call John. It was a lot of stuff going on stupid in Israel. And this is why he's teaching it. Do you think John know what Jesus knew? John, do you think John the Baptist knew what Jesus That's why he said, man, you should be baptized in me. Yes, we're cousins, but you're something different than me. You have to understand, bro. And what we don't do is in a discussion, we will not read the verses. You will not. As I told you, what Brother Fred said, he said, remember you talked to Abimelech. I said, that's right, sure did. Sure did. He, that's a scripture I remember. I can read. I remember when I was talking. I didn't add it into that. So now, if he just said, "I would not believe that," that's how you talk to people, brethren. And you go to that verse. You know, I didn't have to go to the verse. I remember it. Okay, it's that. And now you're supposed to go either. Let me pray about it. I'm having trouble accepting it. But you got to acknowledge it's in the book. And I'm wrong. Let me see if I can accept it. Just be honest. I gotta go pray about it. I can accept it. Because we know you're not accepting when you walk away. <laughs> you know, you better go pray about it. Because you sure are going to need some strength. Because it's not leaving the Bible. And it's just that simple. That's why, that's why no matter how you feel, when you're in tune with the Lord, and you're not feeling good, you lay down, man, I hope I wake up in the morning. You're not worried. Because you know I'm ready. If you're not ready, you better fix it now. I'm telling you, fix it now. Talk to the Lord now while I'm talking. You need to talk to the Lord right now. Because you should be ready. You should be ready because you don't know when the hour is going to be for you. And I don't know. He says, call no man father upon the earth. Now they got this in verse 9. But one of your father, which is, yeah, I'm talking about modern day brother. Well, do you, do you know that's not talking about his daddy? He can call his daddy father. So that's talking about religious sin. Rabbi is a religious sin. The religious sin. What's your, what are your doctor in theology? You can't do that. I'm not saying you can't go to school and learn, but don't go around telling people that. You know you're getting glory. You must think we crazy. That's why he describes. Neither be you called master or one of your master, even Christ. There are many religions use the term master. You see it more in the Asian culture. You're maybe not affiliated with the Asian culture a lot. They, that's a regular term like Priest called father and cat. Man, they use master all the time. But master, good master. That's not they use that all the time. A normal stuff to them. It's all to you. Who calls anyone out? A bunch of people with plenty of money in their pocket. You just don't know them. But this is about Jewish saved soul. This isn't about Asia, China, and nowhere else. He's talking to them. They know what master means. Rabbi and father has nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Anybody teach that is crazy. There is no Catholic Church right now. Jews called each other father, but you're greater than me. He said, stop that. You got one father now. And he didn't say it's me. For Geno Genesis, he didn't say it's me. That's what I'm telling you, brethren. Lord, help you. Brethren, John gave you what you needed in his epistle. God, help us to keep it. He says, if they are of us, they are his. You got a problem with that. I know you do, and I do too. I have to check myself all the time. Amen. If they are with us, they will hear. And who is the us? Not you. The us is the book. 
You not the us. You the us if you preach the book. If they don't hear this, I don't care if they've been preaching for 70 years, he's going to die lost. Amen. Whatever he saved, getting in, but not him. And you just got sometimes you got to tell, bro, you're a wonderful man. I just hate to see you going to die lost. I love you. I'm all called. And somebody comes, you know, bro, so and so say, you say you're going to hate to see him die. Yeah, I did. And I hope you don't think like it. You're going to die lost too. See, you know why you don't do that? Because you do that with physical stuff. If you keep drinking like you drinking with your liver getting hard, you're going to die. You say that, oh, you're not even no doctor. How do you know my body going to die drinking? You're a doctor. You heard that. But you're right. Liver get hard like a rock. It just gets hard for some reason. That liver gets hard. It's supposed to be soft. You keep on hitting that liquor. You keep hitting that gin. The liver going to rock up on you. You're going to die. You tell them that. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to drop this as a bonus from the Lord. You better tell these people stop smoking this weed. I don't care where they got it. Let me tell you something about weed. There's a whole lot of stuff you don't understand about weed. Weed slows you down. You're smoking this weed, driving, you better watch it. You kill somebody, they're going to throw you under the jail. You don't understand. You better tell your family, especially your children, you better quit smoking this nasty weed. I don't care where you got it. You can get it right out of Colorado, the purest brand. It is a drug. It is not for you to be getting high on. If, you don't, if you're not sick and it's not being amiss by a, a doctor, stay away from you. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Your mind's so messed up, you can't even think straight nor take too long to answer. Huh? Huh? Like you singing a song. You, what's wrong with you? What you been doing? You sleepy? If weed is better than alcohol, you keep under. You don't you understand marketing, do you? You haven't heard nothing good about weed other than from doctors. Nah, it's all because it's marketing. It's going to really be tough. Gonna be, you're going to start seeing commercials about wait till they come down to Texas. If not, it'll be international commercials or outside the state. Because it's money, man. That Colorado making a killing. You don't know about because you don't live that. Roads all nice. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better be careful. God help just the bonus. You better listen to what the Lord tell you about being not sober. So he says here, but the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. That's not good. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So exalted is good. Because if the Lord exalted, you exalt yourself, that's not good. But woe unto you. Look at the specific. He calls them out. Do you know if you are a scribe that tags you? You walk by him and say, scribe, Pharisee, hypocrite. I can't say, huh? Now, one group going to come ask him, you talking about us too? Amen. Watch, watch. We're going to get to it. He says, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. That means you're a pretender. No hypocrite goes to heaven. None. In any of the dispensations. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven. Watch what you do. Against men. How do I shut up? See, when I told you, I said, brethren, I love you, but brethren, you're going to you're gonna have, to, you're gonna have to stick with the word. When I told you when the brethren closed the church doors, they closed it on you. You cannot worship by yourself. And if you did not ask God to give you mercy because you couldn't go to church, I'm in jail, Lord, like John. Please receive my communion with you. You're going to go to hell for playing with God. That's why you should have been infuriated when you came into their presence. Say, man, you know, you got me in trouble with Jesus. Just thank, I'm thankful he forgave me. You locked me out of service. We couldn't gather. And, and, and you had everybody else scared. They couldn't gather with me. I got a problem with you, brother. You know why I didn't do that? You, you, you just like everybody else that would have ran when Jesus got pinned on that cross. Now you running. You running, brethren. Talk about I die for Jesus. Man, you can't even argue for Jesus. Oh. Why would you not come tell a piece of dirt? You know, you know one of y'all gonna see me dead one day, right? If, you know, unless we all die together, God forbid. Why would you be afraid of something I say that I can't read? Why would you, why would you not say, brother, why'd you lock me out from my worship to the Father? If you was too scared, why you let somebody else do? Because you're running the church. You know it's gonna make you look bad if you let somebody else. You could have tossed the keys to somebody else. But you know that you knew that make you number you make you the number one coward because you didn't come to church and it might make them give you a pink slip since you didn't come to church. I tell you what, brother, whatever part you play in that, you better get that fixed with Jesus. 
You better get that fixed with Jesus before you hit the dirt. Because I'm telling you, he's coming back. And you should be brought with him and not tossed from him when he comes back. Or either lifted up with him and not cast away. See, this thing is real, brother. You can love everybody on earth. You can have good food and good things and joy. Just don't get in trouble with God. Sanctify him in your heart. Set him up high. Separate chair. Nobody else get it but him. Not even you. And then you're going to be good. You won't worry about nothing. You ain't worry about no who the president and nothing else. Because y'all walk with Jesus. Did you see Daniel nervous in another country? And he young. And they tell him what to eat. Here's a young man. No, we're going to eat this. This watch. We're going to look better than them. And he did. So eat the right thing in, in spirituality. So he says here, you shut the king of heaven against me. For neither do you go in yourself. I thought, I thought that wasn't possible. I thought you couldn't stop. I've heard people say, you can't stop never going to heaven. How they stop from going to heaven? Now, I think Jesus knows better than you and me who can stop somebody from going to heaven. He said, you can stop a man from going to heaven. I, I'm going to read this again. For he says, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. So a man can do that. And guess who can do it better than anybody? A saint, because these are saints. You don't get to be no Pharisee and no scribe and not be a saint. For you neither go in yourself, that is, neither suffer you them that enter to go in, because you block it with your doctrine. They can't stop it physically. No old men, I push them old men. No, it's stopping it with the doctrine. But woe, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Do you see the estimation? So he didn't say like, woe unto you. Right? Pharisees, hypocrites. He would say, well, whatever excitement is needed to make sure you know he's excited. So the writer puts an exclamation. So it definitely wasn't said calm and humble as a lamb. Okay, so we know that one. So he says, for you devour widows' houses. What does that mean? I'm going to eat your house out. Is he eating the wood and chewing on the doorknob? No, I'm going to eat down what you got. You got some brethren that will take the last of an old, or old sister come up and say, you know, I don't have, I don't understand the widow's might. She gave all she had. But they say she go, she went and counseled. Somebody can, you know, say, well, you know, I don't have a way to pay no bill, but I know the church need here. You know, so I don't think my life's going to get turned up. That's okay. You gonna say, hey, hold on, sister. We give a portion. I don't know if in the dark. Is the church going to be okay? I'm going to go, God going to bless you. That's what they're doing. Don't tell them you don't eat no willow house and chew wood and, and nails. You don't do that. I eat you down. You're a widow. I'm going to bilk you and bilk you and bilk you. I know you ain't got no man. I'm going to take everything you got. God, I bless you. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord, help this beautiful widow. Yeah. And he's going to help you to step right into hell when it's time. I say, praise his name. Because you got to go to hell for dog and people like you manipulate the mind. You use them. You know, you know, she don't have no man. Ah, I get all yeah. she got. No man will speak for her. Oh, I think we've given up on this. Watch, wait, no man now. Mm -hmm. If you don't watch him, he'll be in the bed with you too. Be careful. If you're still young and look good, watch him. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Uh, Eli's bars, I don't think I need to go no further than that. And yes, they were bona fide priests, ordained of God. And so he says here, eat with those eyes down for a pretense. Here's another problem. You make long prayer. There's nothing wrong with a long prayer. But in your heart, he's talking about their hearts for pretense. I'll make my prayer long. So we not criticize nobody with a long prayer. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. Yours is greater. <clears throat> Why? A more severe whipping in here because you know what you're doing. Once you break down to a brother... The specifics of what they did wrong, now it's in the heart. I don't, I don't want to fix it. So you know what you're doing. Verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Jesus, Master, you're telling me the Pharisees going to hell? That's the, see, that, that, that's, that's what they were doing. You don't think they were doing him? Man, these people disrespected Jesus. So, And somebody would say, well, they didn't know who he was. Do you know he's holy? Check. 
Is he a pedophile? No. So he's clean. Marty, check. Did you ever hear him lie against God? No. Check. So why didn't you listen to him? You don't have to know he's the son of God. He told you the son of God. And he told you, if you don't believe me, believe my works. His works were so pre-designed from the description of him in the Old Testament, it falls in line. Without hammer, just falls right in line. So you going to tell me, I got to know you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to listen to you. Peter's not Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So, so what hope have any of us passed Christ? See, it's so ridiculous. See, it's ridiculous. You know, the sobering effect of coming to worship is so beautiful. I found out so much I didn't know. I still find out things all the time. So sobering. Like wind on your face. Oh, man, thank you, Lord. Sorry I failed in that area. <laughs> But some folks just come in the church and they want the Lord to be glad. I'm, he should be glad I made it, child. I'm tired. Yeah, but he's not glad like that. Sorry. He's not. You're not doing him a favor, nor am I. So he says, you're a child of hell. Now, you know you understand a child of hell. I'm a, I'm a child of fifth ward. Okay, so that's where I came from. Okay, now, born there too and raised. Now, He's a child of hell. So he's traveled there and enjoyed the kingdom. He likes it. I'm placing my citizenship in hell. And when I go get people, I'm not bringing them to your kingdom. I'm bringing them and they're going to be twice as strong as I am. Or as they were, forgive me, in being seated in the kingdom of hell. Because I took them from Confusion, and now they clearly understand how to go to hell. They clearly know how to go now. From teaching, oh, I, I, this is what Jesus said. So when you repeat this, you know what? You know what? Occasionally, I'll test people. They're listening to the news feeds, and it's all positive. So I'll send something positive straight from the Bible, and then sometimes you send something very strong, just words from the Bible. You don't get a response. You know, exclamated, "Amen." Yeah. Too strong. Why? I don't want to hear that negative. I know you don't. Why? Because you are going to hell. And you're a child of hell. You don't want to hear about your house. Do you want to hear people talk about your neighborhood? Oh, your neighborhood run down. You don't want to hear that. Oh, my neighborhood is beautiful. It sounds like the morning. So they talk about your hood. And where you going to be forever. And you know it's no good. You don't want to hear that. Brother, if you could know the deceit of the heart of the person and they're being deceived, you would understand that's why they don't like the medicine of God. They don't like the medicine of God. When a child sees a needle, if he got a problem, sometimes adults, they get nervous, start papping, got a comment, don't turn your head, and you're talking to him and find a nurse know how to give it to him, and you're okay. He's just scared. And your big muscles, big as your head, but you're scared of a little bit of needle. He'll whoop a man and save your life, but the little needle gets some nerve. That's how saints are and sinners. Here come, here come the Bible. Here come the Bible. Oh, oh, turn your head. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, brother. Look, so we see overburdening. Teaching truth, but not walking according to truth. Look at Galatians 2.10. This is, so why is he condemning them to hell? Why is he telling them you're a child of hell? Because this is what you do, man. And the Lord is saying, man, I can't, I can't let you die and think that you're going to make it. He's telling them, I can't let you die and think you're going to make it. I don't have a choice. That's my mission. Galatians 2, 10. And now watch what it says. Let's go to verse 11. Forgive me. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face, because it wasn't to be blamed. Well, what did he do? For before that certain came from James, he did even the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew himself, withdrew and separated himself, forgive me, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews assembled likewise in him. And so much that Barnabas was carried away with their disseminate. That is called a fake fraudulent love. That's all it is, and it's a sin. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of God. So here is their sin. The walk is crooked. Peter and these men taught pure gospel to my own knowledge. But I'm not walking. It doesn't affect anyone but you. So Paul cares about their souls and not to tell them. 
You're not walking according to it. See, you think it's going to cause other people to go to hell. Listen, it only causes other people to go to hell if they're foolish enough to follow it. But they don't get a pass card because you show them something different. They don't get no pass card. You're supposed to go, he's not walking right. I said to Peter before tomorrow, if thou being a Jew, living after the man of Gentiles. So if you are a saint living like a sinner and not as do the Jews, why compare us to the Gentiles to live as a Jew? If you're going to walk like a sinner, why are you trying to get a sinner to be a Christian? Y'all, they're already looking at your walk. You showing them how to walk. Well, just leave where they at. They're going to go there like that. That's what a lot of people do all the time. Brethren, look at what he says, verse 15. He says, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of Gentiles. Jews naturally grew up at this time frame, comprehending and understanding the truth of God. Not today, at this time frame. But the truth of God has changed into a new truth which overshadows the old truth that you must obey. And this is, this is why you catch the faithful Jew at, that has to make a transition. The, the, the rebel Jew never going to act right. Only some of them will come to the Lord. But even the faithful Jew has to make a transition. It's a, it's a struggle for Peter. Man, we never eat with them. Well, nobody care what you think, brother Peter. Just do what you're told. He says, knowing that a man is not just by the words of law, but that the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, and we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not the works of the law. By the works of the law, should no flesh be justified. So while the seven day event is trying, and the Jews trying to go to church on Sabbath, because I'm trying to be justified by the works of the law. See, a lot of times when you're talking to people, you have to understand, okay, I told you that already. We told you that already. No, no. You're just denying. We told you that. So what else can we say now? But see, in your mind, no, they going to get it. I remember I was hard to get. But what you were hard to get on, or you hard to get on that. So what did they do to you? They, I guarantee they left you. Nobody going to go to hell with you, man, because you don't want to accept the truth about a subject. You have no scripture to point to. It's just assumption, something you're guessing at. So don't do that. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners. It's therefore Christ the means of sin. God forbid. You can't, you can't be a teacher of truth and live a double life because at some point, people are going to shy away from you. Now, what you do tell them true, remember, sit in Moses, see, you got to listen, but don't do as they do. Okay, some cases you're forced to hear that person, that's who's before you. But the idea is you're going to gravitate away from their works. So, Paul is reaching for Peter's soul. That's all. Jesus already covered in Matthew 23. Just don't do what they do. He's reaching for Peter's soul and the other. And reaching now for a Barnabas gone bad. Barnabas gone bad. That's what you got on your head. Hanging around with Peter. That's the problem. Another saint supposed to be leading right and not. And the error isn't they was out drinking, chasing women or men. They're doing a doctrinal teaching by action that's incorrect. If this is, see, so now, now here go, here go the, here go the noble saint. We shouldn't be splitting spiritual halves. We need to be trying to go rescue souls. No, 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 no. Paul says, no, I'm going to get this soul that preached the first gospel message. Because he's on his way to hell. Because he's living not like the faithful Jew who's become a Christian. That's not no splitting hairs. That's going to reach for your brethren's soul. Some of you may think, well, it's angelic because he don't have a doctor. I could have got one. And it's nothing but money. You just pay for it. I can learn like any man. Man, I've learned everything I wanted I needed to learn. It's nothing but written words. No doctrine is above knowledge. Well, you can't comprehend it if God wants you to have. It's that I knew it was nothing but a piece of paper trash. That's what. It didn't mean anything to God. So it wasn't necessary. For what? I don't have time to waste. My life is short, man. I don't have time to be wasting on no foolishness. And it's going to make God want to kill me for having it while I'm telling people I got it. Why would I want to do something stupid like that? Because I would rather the glory on her. And the Lord said, well, you have your reward now. Because I don't have nothing to give you. You got your reward while you was here. So, I don't know. What you, can do. you just better try to tell him, man, you can't do that. He says, if I build again, 
The things I just thought, I make myself a transgressor. This is why he says, you guys can't escape hell. And everybody you teach, they'll follow you. They'll go to hell too because you build again that which is destroyed. It was destroyed when Moses taught them, love your neighbor as yourself. It was destroyed that there's only one God. It was destroyed that you can be somebody beyond what is written. Because there's only one God and you have to love your neighbor as yourself. So he says, y'all brethren. Okay. Moses never told you to vaunt yourself over someone else. So why would you? Because I'm wicked. I'm wicked. Don't matter how many people listen to you. It's just you're wicked. So he says, For I through the law I'm dead to the law that I might live unto God. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet and I. Christ lived in me in my life, which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith. The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now you know that's impossible for Christ to be dead in vain. Brethren, <clears throat> you and I are going to have to accept and I will walk on the earth. You tell a person what the Lord has said. If they want to hear more, then you talk to them. They're going to reach a point where they're going to tell you, let's talk about something else. And now you know it's time to quit talking about them. You know why? Because, oh, so you don't want to accept this. So what, what, what will we do together? What could we possibly count since you're going east and I'm going west? I think Amos covered that. You got to go in the same direction. <laughs> it's amazing. Nevertheless, let's go back to Matthew 23. Jesus, Master, you telling me all these people going to hell. Yep. Yep. It's amazing how we're influenced by the denominational world of people that do not know the left from the right. Can I judge? You know, one of the things that amazes me and I always remind myself when I'm in business, I'm like, you guys don't even do business good as Gentiles. You build a big building, then you stop a certain race from coming in. How stupid are you? How stupid are you? Didn't that race help you build a building? And then you can't solve problems. I see people where problems are caused, but a simple sign would have solved it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, a sign would have fixed that. And you want me to let you tell me about, gee, you're too stupid to orchestrate everyday business. Common sense says there's no sign. That's why people keep running into each other. There's no sign that says one way. So how could you, how could you miss that? You don't have nobody over that? Because you're stupid. And you may get excited. I say, and you want me to let you come tell me about spiritual things Jesus covered in John 3. If you don't understand the physical, how are you going to possibly get the spiritual? You don't even know how to orchestrate a country. None of you can keep it in line right without God's intervention. You want me to let you tell me about spirituality. And you don't even have the knowledge of, the, of a master of Israel like Nicodemus. You can't tell me nothing that would possibly save my soul. You might point out something I missed, but you couldn't help me carry it out because you don't have the strength to even pray for me. So why is the denomination of the world so impressive to you? I've never understood that. My brother as a Baptist preacher, when I came to the life of Christ, never impressed me another day out there. Just simple comes as a man. This guy knows absolutely nothing about God as he ought to know. And he's older than me on top of that. How is that possible? Oh, yeah, I told him when we talk personal. I'm not talking about Matthew dead, believe me. You can't see that. You can, man, they're blind. They are literally blind spiritually. And you don't follow them? God help us. Matthew 23, verse 16. Look at this one. Woe unto you, you blind guys that say, whosoever shall swear by the temple. Now watch this. These next few we're going to deal with and we're going to wrap up. He's going to point out a section of stupidity on which is greater. He's not going to say it to them like children. You don't understand. He's going to be like, man, how could you possibly get this wrong? Woe unto you, you blind guys that say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. For so shall swear by the gold of the temple. He is a debtor over the exclamation point. Now, no, 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 so, no, you know what? They hard grab and say to the money. <laughs> Why people, some they want their money to be blessed. But the temple is what God said is what I'm going to come visit you. 
when you gather there. Not visit you with money in pocket. So he says, you fools and blind. Now I thought Jesus said, don't call them by their fool unjustly, obviously. You fool. He didn't say, don't call a man fool except me. I can call you fool. No, he said, he's talking about unjustly. This is justified. You fools and blind. For whether it's greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies gold. Now, now when you hear that, you go, oh yeah, that's right. Why do they know that? Because I'm a sinner and my heart not right. Verse 18, whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. Whosoever shall swear by the gift that is on it, he is guilty. <laughs> you know what's wrong? What's on the altar? A gift. Money. He's saying, you don't have the comprehension. No, the altar is what makes the thing something separate. You fools and blind for what is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. If this was something that Jesus should understand they've got to learn. See, a lot of time you and I do that. We'll say that. But brother, everybody not the same level. Jesus said, no, 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 no. See, you don't get these types of things wrong. No. Okay, I think <clears throat> Simon the Sorcerer is at a very low level just being baptized. I don't think you could get any lower than that. And he wants to buy the Holy Ghost. They blast him like he is from hell. You're in the gall of bitterness, the ball of iniquity. Your heart not right. How could Peter judge another man? Because oh, what came out your mouth? But he's a babe. See, that's how you and I want to talk to excuse sin. The men of the Bible? No, don't do that. Jude was clear. Make a difference. How do you make a difference knowing who should be blasted and who should be pacified? Let's see what come out of his mouth. That's going to tell us off the top. Some stuff just too stupid to say. You know, oh man, you must still be a sinner. What? What? You thought what? Some things, learning curve, I didn't know. Jews say make a difference. When you don't know the difference in something sanctified and dirty, the Hebrew writer says, Hebrews 6, man, that's basic. The minute you get baptized, we should never see you in a club, nasty dancing, half dressed, running women, homosexual. All the immoralities are to be such a shit. Oh, you still got God and business in your heart. You might struggle with attendance. You might struggle with several things, uh, comprehension, acceptance of new you, but morality. Lost your mind. You got a preacher having sex with other women. You don't know how to say, brother, there's a child for you. God help you make it before he kill you. And sit down. <laughs> man, it blow my mind. I'm like, man, you know, something wrong with us. Something wrong with us. David is not a gospel preacher. David was allowed multiple women. David sees a woman he can't have and he knew it. That's why God bludgeoned him for it. So don't go talk about David. David is a king. Rather did God sit any of those kings down while they were acting crazy. You're not your king and priest, but you're not the king of Israel. You got the thing twisted, man. So that's why we see Peter getting blasted for simply getting up from eating with Gentile. He's being, he's being reprimanded. No, you're going to send him down. He's being reprimanded. And he say, you can't sleep with me and Peter. <laughs> That wasn't the topic. You can see the difference. That wasn't the topic. Moralities. But understand the transitioning from one law to the next. Don't get it confused, bro. There's some, there's some things you have to understand that people need to stop lying. Fools need to stop. It, it don't matter about what you thought. You need to watch yourself. Because there's certain things in morality. You just, okay, we don't do that no more. And you need to get yourself together. Don't nobody want to hear what you're trying to do. Because that's morality. Let's wrap this up. He says here, that verse 21, look at this one here. No, let's get in verse 20. Who who therefore, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, swear by it, and by him that dwelleth there, and say, He's breaking it down. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth 
thereon. So Jesus breaks down and says, man, you got this whole thing wrong, man. You don't understand what sanctifies. And all the sanctification comes from what God says sanctified. The Muslims are not sanctified. Neither is that vile mosque or none of them mosques that's around Houston and everywhere. They're not sanctified. And there's another thing too, man. I'll tell you, this is, this is de degrading to God. How people respect the mother, we had a gospel preacher that was like that. There's something about the mother that these people are vile. They have started a false God named Allah, a false religion, and then they'll kill you for not hearing to You can't kill us all because God's not going to let it out. So as you kill one, there'll be another over there saying the same thing about you. You're never going to stop the gospel. They may have been trying since the day it was preached and haven't stopped it yet. You might stop a denominational person. But you'll never stop us. You don't even know who we are. You'll be talking to some denomination and thinking that's not it. We'll tell you that's not even one of us and walk by you. You blind fool. That's not even one of us. You don't even know that. He said, remember that old man gone. Go ahead. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't even know what a saint is. And you think these individuals are sanctified, holy, Ramadan, bowing down, rugs everywhere. You're not holy, and not for a minute if you come in my presence. I'm gonna tell you very nice. I'm never let you think you're holy. And I'm telling you, that's a false God. I'll tell you, that's a false God, man. I'm not with you. I'm not trying to be your friend. Anyway, I never told you I want to be your friend. I love you as a neighbor. You follow right now. I'm going to call the ambulance. I don't want to be nothing with you. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to do nothing. I got money because I work from God. Hand it come. I don't need nothing from a Muslim and no other false religion. I hope you understand that, brother. If I need you, I'll snatch it right out the hand and put it in mine. You need to understand to draw the line. Understand, there's a movement that's been going on for a long time. Judeo-Muslim Christian movement. So I'm telling you, brethren, you be careful what you believe and what you hear. Because the devil is coming for you and me. Let's stop right here and talk about more of this later. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1. What does the book say, verse 3, forgive me, about Jesus? Very idea, man. I don't have to explain to you nothing about who Jesus is other than out of this book. We were talking with some gentlemen yesterday. And, and one guy was trying to say, like a lot of our brothers say, well, you know, most people are not going to understand. I said, this is all you get. You speak English? If you don't understand what thou mean, I'll tell you. I said, oh, it was a wonderful conversation. He was just part of other people. I said, this is all you get. This is what you get. The book of God. And if you don't understand that, that's because you're on your way to hell. Because it's in English. And you seem to be speaking it very well. It's, see, it's Nicodemus spoke the same language as Jesus. He said, no, it ain't about understanding. He said, you won't receive it. He let him know, no, you're not going to play the understanding card before me because you are master of Israel. You don't know this. He says, because you don't receive our witness. Now, you better remember that, brother. I'm telling you in love, but with emphasis, you better remember who you are and who's your like brother Ham, you say, because the law will let you know quickly you're not mine and it'll show you spiritually and then it'll come visit you physically and take your stuff, which we know sinners love. You better remember what we're dealing with. This is the word. Somebody say, you understand it? No. Nah, so what word don't you understand? He going to tell you. Well, I understand how all these people can be lost. Jesus, master, you telling me all these people going to hell? Yes. But you might not like that Jesus going to send them to hell. And you might not like Jesus. Check yourself, brethren. First Corinthians 15, 3, 4, I did it with you. First of all, that which all shall receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. It wasn't his plan. God gave him the plan. Do you not understand the separation between Christ and the Father? Do you not understand the Father made this plan up? Not Jesus. He said, I made it up. The Bible says he sent Jesus. He didn't send his son. That's why I say it's bad when you got stupid brethren. I'm just going to say it because I'm so upset that thank Jesus is the Father. This is a problem, brethren. This is a problem. This is a major problem. In your walk and mind, you better get that right. If you don't know who Jesus is, you need to stop teaching. You ask lesson one, who is this man? Who is he? This was God's plan. The father from the beginning sent his son. Picked his son. He didn't pick himself. The Hebrew writer says he didn't pick himself. And he told him, you're not going to be a priest like, hey, you're going to be a priest like Melchizedek. It's important, brethren. 
Hell awaits. Don't let it be you. And that he was buried, and that he rose third day according to the scriptures. Mark 16. I'm not mad at nobody but Satan. Though you entire the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. When you say something like this, is a part emphasis that God had made that same thing. Now, when you see that word God, now who you think it's talking about? Jesus or the Father? See? That's what the Lord telling you. I gonna change the names like I like them. I change the name like I like. But the context tells me that's definitely not Jesus. So should I read this? That Jesus made the same Jesus when you crucified by the Lord. Can I see the fool? So I take the wisdom of a fool. The Lord said, I'm going to show you what a fool he really is. I'll have him sleeping with a man. All I got to do is just pull back my strip and he'll be in a bed with a man with muscles bigger than his head. Kissing him like a girl. And you look at woo, yeah, woo. Well, your mouth told you he was a fool when he opened it. But now you got to see. Why is it like that, brethren? Learn of wisdom. Listen to her voice. She cries. She's already told you, here's a fool speaking. Here's a fool. I know you're going to do it because God loves you and you love him. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said to Peter, rest upon the men and brethren, what shall we do? So the Father made Jesus two things, Lord and Christ. Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the mission of sins you shall see to give the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far. Even as many as the Lord our God shall come, men of the words that he testified and saw, saying, Save yourself. That means they are lost from this unto all generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts 247. Praising God, have faith with all the people in the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Here's a God that don't know, no, this guy don't know anything about Christianity. Peter goes straight to the book. I mean, Philip goes straight to the book on him. Same book you and I read. God, God from another country, straight to the book. There's no Ethiopian God, no gangster gospel, no rich man gospel, no poor man God. One gospel. You understand? That's because you lost. You lost. And you never going to understand it. It's confounded because he wants to cash you in the hell. So if you can't see, oh man, can you help me? Can you pray? Can you pray for me because I don't understand? Okay, now we got you. Well, okay, now let's talk about this. What part don't you understand? Disrespectful, belligerent. All you got is some stuff, and you're going to die, and you're going to stink, and your family going to be ready to get you out of there so fast because you stink in the house up. Your body decaying, and they're going to take all your stuff. And some other man going to have it. So why are you impressive? No impressed. If you can keep yourself alive, then you'd be impressive. Then Philip opened his mouth against the same scripture and preached to him, Jesus. They went on their way. They came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, his water was to hinder me to be baptized. What's holding me up? Philip, here's a water. And Philip said, if thou believe all thy heart, thou mayest. And the answer said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded child to stand still. They went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Will this save me? Let's see. But this is how I always do. It's a litmus test. The litmus test, like Henry said, I don't see what is this person. For by one spirit, we're all baptized in the one body. That is. What's the body? The church, Colossians 1 18. Whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether it be bond or free, if all we made to drink in one spirit. So you don't believe baptism is where well. you get the spirit. Okay, litmus test. Not a believer. Very simple, very simple test. 1 Peter 3, 21. Let's get some more. You sure baptism saves? No, somebody want always this faith. I, I, I know it's important. I didn't ask if it was important. I actually did it say. I asked is the, is the shirt red or blue? It's a yes or no deal. The light figure went to even baptism is also now saved. But see, that's what I'm telling you, brethren. 
You got to really be for the law. Because why some people are going to tell you no on this? You're going to leave the church in heart. You're being here with Because you love them, so you're not going to believe they're wrong. Not putting away the filth of faith, but the answer for good comfort to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven on the right hand of God, angel, a thousand pounds, be made subject unto him. Mm. I see saints suffer all the time. Well, let's find out why. Revelation 2, feel no no things but thou shalt suffer. People try to challenge you. If y'all people go, why y'all suffer? You know they told Jesus that? Wait, leave him alone. If he is God's son, let him save him. You're an idiot. He's not going to save him because he died for you, fool. If he saves him, then you go straight to hell. Well, you're going to go anyway. But at least he's giving you a chance. They'll tell you that. Why do you say something? I see y'all suffering. I see y'all suffering. Okay, can you can you read it? Still, let's go to Revelation 2 10. Feel another little thing without us to suffer. That's what you tell them. Girl, the devil should cast something in the prison. You saw a saint in a prison. Because I know that saint, I, if they're doing something crooked, I don't know nothing about them, but you saw a saint in prison. As you may be tried. You have tribulation 10 days, be all faithful in death. I'll give you the crown of life. There it is. Brethren, start at number one. There's only one real reason I'm not a member of the Catholic Church. Because we had fun in the Catholic Church. Sin, do what you want. It's only one reason I'm not. Because I read voices like yours. And I thank God for you every day. Telling me. It's not right, brother. It's not right, friend. And I'm not going to let you sing once, though. And don't you let me come up and talk to either of us about anything other than what we can read. All you got to do is tell him read it. He'll never read it. He'll never read it. And the verse he pick or she, you'll say, that didn't even say what you said. And then now the Lord showing you, neon sign, not mine, not mine. And then now the challenge is whether you want to love the Lord or not. If you're here, you need to be baptized. They stand and we sit down. You need prayer, do the same. Hold your hand up if you're too weak to rise up. That's fine. If you listen to the message, touch a little V-shaped object. Brother Frizz takes a lot of time out to set that thing. That thing is very technical. You just hit a button. Woof, magic, you no. Know? A lot of, lot of energy. You don't have to do that. You don't have to pay him. You don't have to do that. He loves the Lord. He loves you. He loves the world in a sense to save them. So wherever you at, wherever you at, you could just come out from man, a garbage heap. And if somebody gave you a phone, you could hit that button, hit that YouTube, hit that button, hit that all those phone numbers. You could call. Yeah, I, we suffering here. I'm, I'm ready to kill my baby because I can't afford no more. Oh, hold on. We're going to tell you to do. I'm ready to kill myself. I can't like this. Hold on. We'll tell you what to do. There's other men on there, men of God. But if you don't value the counsel of God, it'll just be words on death here. But if you do, he'll tell you where to go to be saved. And the Lord will have a saint look out for you as if you were their own blood. But you got to believe. Whatever you need, come now together. We stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. Oh,